the sense, right? Um, Dr. Marga Sahayam, you have specifically worked on payloads, science experiments, um, anything that goes towards the International Space Shuttle. And my colleague Abhishek is also here in our studios. Good morning, Abhishek. Good morning, It's been a fantastic, uh, you know, uh, visual, you know, experience treat. for us. A treat. Yeah. Just looking at what has happened. Uh, my question to you, Dr. Ravi, was what are the learnings for NASA specifically of what's gone down in the last 285 days? Well, I think the most important thing is that, you know, uh, uh, in space, space is uh, very unforgiving, you know, and as I earlier said, a lot of unknown unknowns, you know, like in baseball, we say three strikes and you are out. In, in space, activities or travel, one strike and you are out, you know, and we saw that very uh, dearly uh, when it came to Challenger in Columbia. And even Apollo 13 became very close uh, to having a big disaster. Uh, yeah. So I think NASA is such an organization that, yes, uh, it was mandated by government of the United States to, uh, uh, to do the research and, and uh, let the other companies grow uh, uh, and commercialize, commercialize space. So that way we have more people in the business coming and taking the, uh, uh, taking the uh, shouldering the efforts. And that's what we learned uh, in last 280 days because this is not nothing new for us, you know, like, uh, yes, we, she got stranded, but we used 150 experiments and then 900 science uh, uh, data points we got from this mission. So at any given time, I was not worried about it at all because there are five different ports and um, where uh, the Soyuz is docking and we have ATV, we have STV, we have space shuttle docking at that time and uh, SpaceX docking, you know, and uh, also Cygnus docking. So supply wise, we food and other things, we could supply it any minute, any time of the day or night because of uh, Soyuz and, uh, you know, uh, Cygnus. When getting back people, Soyuz is always attached to the rocket, you know, space station. So that was our plan. We always have a plan B, you know, NASA never goes into the business of launching humans to space without having a plan B. In fact, we have plan B, C, D, all the way to Z actually, you know, and sometimes we even go beyond that. Why? Because these are contingency plans and we have to have these plans. Yeah. And yes, you see a great uh, interaction between NASA, SpaceX and outside contractor coming together, working harmoniously. Yeah. And it so happens that uh, she came from this uh, node called Harmony. I launched that, you know, uh, part of the ISS. Yeah, Dr. Mark Sayam, since you were mentioning about plan A to Z, you know, uh, I was uh, reading uh, in the context of the Challenger disaster that uh, for NASA, um, safety first, mission next. And uh, I think uh, those plans A to Z really fit into that formula and uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, philosophy, uh, but for that unfortunate uh, disaster that happened in 1986. Uh, um, uh, if I go to uh, Mr. Nambi Narayan again now this time, uh, Mr. Narayan, you know, I, I would want to really listen to you and those watching would want to hear from you what this really means for the youngsters, the younger generation, the kids watching for the science, technology, engineering, math ecosystem. I mean, those who would have watched this splash down, the young minds, they would have felt inspired. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure uh, that, that's what is happening around. In fact, I have been uh, watching this wherever I go, restaurants, airports, and other places. Uh, my fan club is only 10 to 12 years old boys and girls. Uh, in fact, they bring their parents and introducing myself to them. I was astonished. See, the kind of uh, awareness they are having with respect to space is something great. But of course, as you know that uh, we, the technologies are different. There are two different technologies. One is with respect to the uh, how to travel to space and how to maneuver it and how to stay back there, etc., etc. These are all pure engineering. But on the other hand, when we are dealing with human beings and how uh, Ravi was telling that uh, the muscle and the bone and the uh, respiration systems and the heart and the brain and uh, eyesight, etc. These are requiring another set of uh, specialization. And that specialization works only mainly on imagination. 
So that way we are, uh, we are interested in both areas. Supposing if the youngsters are coming, what I would imagine is that we should have some more institutes uh, like the Indian Space Research Organization's uh, subsidiary. There is a Space Technology Center Institute. Same thing like that, you should have at least two or three more so that we are able to get the best brain trained for this. I'm not talking about the astronauts alone. Astronauts is a different story. But the, what is behind the whole thing is we should uh, specialize in various systems which are coming on the way. So that way we can, we can uh, promote uh, the enthusiastic youngsters. And also we can have some kind of, according to me, that each school should have a space exhibition or a space uh, lab, what I call it, wherein you can exhibit things like uh, PSLV model, GSLV model, Gaganyan, and stuff like that, which will promote their thinking process, which will promote their enthusiasm, which will also promote uh, uh, the, the future uh, astronauts will come from this kind of uh, uh, pushing. So the interesting thing is that I find there's an awareness among the youngsters. In fact, many of them ask me, sir, what do we do to become a space scientist? Yeah. Now, we, we can tell them that you go and study mechanical engineering and then go for electronics or try to learn uh, this problem, uh, even aeronautical engineering, we have very limited institutes only. So that is something which we have to attend to it, and we should make it clear that, uh, that uh, see, the once upon a time, if you really take it, these institutes were nil. In fact, when I studied, I went to Princeton at that time, there was no institute here to educate me on propulsion. Yeah. Now, today you have, you have some, so many institutes are there. So this is one way of, uh, the government can get into this, and the private sector also can address this. Right, uh, uh, Mr. Narayan, and uh, uh, if I could go to Dheeraj call now, and uh, Dheeraj, you know, you were mentioning a lot about what happens uh, now to the astronaut, to uh, Sunita Williams' body, and uh, to, uh, the, to, 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 to the other astronauts, so the changes that take place, but these are all, uh, uh, experiments in science.